I met them was because I really experienced like a huge pain point because I experienced like a really bad breakup, so like multiple breakups back to back. Once you become so used to this type of online meeting people through these apps behavior, then it becomes extremely difficult for you to actually start connecting with people offline. There's like a chapter in the book where the author actually goes to talk to a girl at an ice cream shop. Everything yeah. is vibe and vibration. And this is why you can't even really quantify it. It ends up being more like life coaching. How you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah, exactly. Right? If you want to be someone that's lovable, you need to love life first. You have 24 hours in a day, no matter how rich you are, how young you are. I put on a cheeky British accent, literally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like rainy now. Rainy. Classic London vibe, you know? Wow. <laughs>And just do this. Escape 9 to 5 is my excuse to talk to people who have escaped their 9 to 5 life and created a portfolio life for themselves. Today I have Steven with me. Basically, I met I met Steven in the part-time YouTuber academy. And then he used to work in the traditional industry and then now he has his own business. He has this house manifest and also he's a life coach, relationship coach. And usually I start the podcast by asking people to tell me two truths and a lie about their escape 9 to 5 journey. So... <laughs> Do you have that? If you just ask me right now, I wouldn't be able to tell you, but because you asked me that yesterday, yeah. I have a list, you know? Okay. I thought about it because yeah, I'm yeah. like, I wouldn't be able to actually come up with it on the spot. Yeah. So I made a list, right? Number one, I haven't had a lease for the past nine years. Since 2015, I haven't had a lease. Number two, I got laid off three times before I voluntarily escaped the nine to five. Number three, my first role after I escaped the nine to five was a dating coach. <laughs> Maybe that's a lie. I was like, ah. I think the second one is a lie mm. because usually people do it to change the number mm. for a fact so that change it, it becomes a lie. Mm. Yeah. Which one? So the first one is a lie partially true i haven't had a lease for almost for the past nine years but then the only i did have a lease once when i was living in london from 2017 to 2019. so it's a so two years true. lease and yeah two year lease well it was like a year lease first and then i extended it for another year mm -hmm. and i was because i was here for business school right so uh -huh. that was the only time i was yeah. i had a proper lease and like ever since i, I left my nine to five in in 2019. Uh -huh. so ever since then like i was I've been pretty nomadic. London was like pretty much the like only exception during that time. Yeah. yeah, I should have thought about that because I know that you you did an MBA. And tell me the other two facts. So you lost your job three times. And what was the final one you voluntarily leave? What type of job was that? That was the one last corporate job, right? Yeah. Right. So I got laid off three times right so first time it was uh, it was like my first job i was at a, i was in chicago uh -huh. i was a, a bond trader oh you were a trade i was a trader uh -huh. yeah and i got laid off Is it 2008? this was 2009 2009 early 2009 yeah the second time was i was working after that i was working at this uh, real estate investment company newport beach in california near la mm -hmm. after a year i got laid off and the third time was like real estate investment job i moved to san francisco i started working in uh, like startup tech and then um i moved to another company because I really wanted to move to New York. So I ended up moving to New York and within like three or four months, they, the company let the entire yeah. uh, you know, New York staff and yeah. I was one of them. Yeah, the last time I got laid off, mm. yeah. I get it now, so this is it. I'm not going to go back to anyone ever again. I'm just gonna do my own business. Um, yes and no. So I got, after I got I was like, well, I just moved to New York and it was like three months into it i'm like what do i do and i was like okay i want to survive in new york yeah so i i really hustled and i ended up finding a job um at uh, this big tech company called salesforce oh. um in new york city yeah yeah and then um i was hired as like um campaign managers slash business development persons to kind of help expand their footprint even though salesforce is an american company they acquired this um British company, right? Uh, that was specifically helping companies manage their social media campaigns. Okay. Like a paid ads and stuff like that. Yeah. So then, like, I was hired as like the f one of the first person to help expand their footprint to New York and the rest of America. Mm -hmm. So I got hired. So I was there for about a year, something like that. Um, so that was my last job, and I didn't get laid off. I was like 
it was amazing. It, it was giving me the lifestyle that I was looking for at the time. Um, I was able to really enjoy New York. It was about 11, 12 years ago. Um, I was in my mid twenties and I was loving it. And then at a certain point, I realized that I was looking at my what my ba boss was doing, and I'm like, I definitely do not see myself, yeah. you know, staying in the role, like becoming promoted to my uh, my boss's role. Yeah. So I was like what is my way of exiting you know you naturally lead to our next question always ask like why then why did you decide that you want to change because you were the first one who hired as a campaign manager so what does yeah. your boss do and how uninspiring his <laughs> life is <laughs> yeah 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 is there a pivotal moment you were like this is it i'm not gonna well it's very gradual I think it was a gradual thing. Yeah. I think for me, I really glorified the idea of living in New York and then just being laid off from my previous job and then getting this job and like also getting paid a lot of money all of a sudden. Like it kind of like made me realize that, okay, this is like kind of what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But then seeing what my boss was doing, he was kind of traveling a lot between New York and London. Mm -hmm. He was doing a lot of account management and he was like constantly busy and he was like, he couldn't have his own decision. Um, I, he doesn't he, have agency in life. Exactly. He didn't he didn't have his own decision making power. Really? And it How just was he? he was like only like oh, in a year okay. or two. And it's not that it's not that he's a bad person, but like his life was on his really like not that inspiring. And at the same time, I see my friends, they were they were building their own um, dating coaching company for men. Like helping men um, improve their like communication skills and like talk to women during the day. Uh, sober and like they're traveling around the world hosting all these different seminars and boot camps and selling products and they were living this digital nomad lifestyle before this digital nomad movement became a thing and this was like 2012 13 you know and then i was like so part of me was like okay now finally i'm in new york like i want to really evaluate whether this could be my home because like another kind of context is that since i was born i moved every one to two years across different cultures and continents so i was always this perpetual new kid on the block you know so i was like okay finally where is my home where is my home this is always like the question uh -huh. that was that was in the back of my mind new york was always i don't know why it was always like the place that i wanted to explore so badly uh, in my 20s and yeah. once i finally experienced it and i was like this is great, but like also maybe because I was influenced by my friends building those uh, that dating coaching business, mm -hmm. mainly based in London and all over. I I saw the the way they were living their lives, and I was like, I kind of want to explore something similar, and like don't see myself in this corporate world anymore. I'm young, right? Yeah. I'm in my mid twenties, and like this is time to really, really take some risk. Yeah. and they just go for it so yeah oh, that's super cool so many questions pop into my mind how did you have all of those friends as dating coach at the time i i think now it makes sense to me because you're like you can see the possibilities yeah like what other life exactly. is and that's yeah. actually one part of the reason why i'm doing this podcast yeah because the more i talk to people the more i realize there's so many different life out there outside of nine to five yeah and i just want to genuinely bring this possibility to other people yeah but if you can talk about like how do you meet these interesting people that's mm. actually the first time i met them was because i really experienced like a huge pain point because i experienced like a really bad breakup like multiple breakups breakups back to back and then yeah yeah, yeah. and then yeah it was possible right yeah yeah all good all good i mean now when i think about it it's, it's quite laughable actually because yeah. it's one of those things that like objectively it's like really not a big deal but then at the time it was a big deal for me yeah, of course. i wanted to find a solution i was depressed for two years and then i was like i need to get out of this hole. and um i read this this was actually before i was in san francisco i was like in college okay and then i read this book called the game very very famous book uh popularized by this author called uh, neil strauss and the men's world like this is kind of like the the label yeah that everyone talks about yeah and yeah, so I read that book and that really made a lot of impact on me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there's a maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. If this guy can like really try really transform from being a very shy person and then now he's like he can actually communicate with women very powerfully. Maybe maybe I can solve my problems as well. Yeah. Ended up sort of seeking the solutions online and then I kind of stumbled upon these guys and they had an amazing YouTube channel talking about how like there's like a chapter in the book where the author actually goes to talk 
talk to a girl like at, a, at an ice cream shop and then like gets their number and then they go on dates or something right yeah. and then at the time that idea was like so like crazy to me right I was like damn you don't have to go to a bar no you don't have to go to a you club know, you, never you can just do do this wherever you yeah, know you do and then I was like man I want to learn this skill set so I, I started following these guys and then like they had this amazing YouTube channel where they were documenting their their lifestyle you know mm -hmm. like traveling like you know teaching guys and like just super wholesome vibe you know yeah I'm like I want to be a part of that part of that crew I want to be a part of that community yeah. so I think it was more so like it was a combination of me wanting to really solve these problems that yeah. I've been dealing with so badly and then two I think I wanted to be a part of something yeah. and then these guys kind of really like promised that a little bit right mm -hmm. and then next time the first time they came out to San Francisco I took a camp with these guys Ooh. yeah and then like I learned so much I had like nothing to lose so I was like so you know like really soaking up like a sponge everything that was they were teaching me uh -huh. and then I was like just connecting with all these people creating a lot of numbers going on dates I was like this is insane you know and then they were like Steven you're really good uh, we want to like train you more you know I ended up becoming their like a junior instructor so every nice. time they came came to the states they would fly me to different locations and then I ended up teaching with them and then when I and then I threw that every time they they had a stamp it was also a way for me to meet other people who were experiencing my problems, other men. And then we, we started talking about like what it, what it would be like to actually live a lifestyle of location independence. And then I met a couple of really good friends, actually. See, when I think about, when I look back on my, my, my New York days, mm -hmm. my later San Francisco days, like yeah. my most significant friendships and connections came from that era, came from that um, sphere, realm of like people who, who want to move their dating relationships you know and people who are like willing to experiment with a lot of things like you know we're in the same kind of age group you know early mid-20s you know so that's kind of what sort of catapulted everything that's so cool i think the best part is like you're just trying things without thinking too much i think that's usually the problem for people yeah. in the past i would have thought the same as difficult to connect with people in a coffee shop but nowadays like I meet all my friends yeah. in the same coffee shop in Lisbon I'm, yeah. I'm gonna have a video called how to win friends in coffee shop yeah. <laughs> so I think actually genuine connections and also sparks it happens everywhere it doesn't always only limit it to romantic relationship it, oh yeah 100%. yeah uh, energy this kind of thing transcends the everything way of energetics everything yeah. is vibe and vibration and this is why you can't even really quantify it when you meet someone like you feel that vibration because every every single human being like we're all made up of like atoms you know okay. and atoms vibrate like we're getting into physics right now <laughs> quantum physics vibe you know if you can share with me because you must have ups and downs when you're trying to transition yeah to that dating coach uh, theme how do you get your first customer or they they just hand it over to you really good question so at first I didn't really leave my nine-to-five thinking that I wanted to become a dating coach it's just that my friends were doing this and then I kind of saw an opportunity where I would where I would be able to, able to help them out as like a marketing person because I was in that marketing. world for oh, a bit. Okay. So like I, I started helping them out with like marketing and also because I was doing a lot of Facebook ads and stuff like that for different startups and Salesforce. I was like, hmm, I can actually use a skill set um, to like help companies sort of like, you know, get more leads or get more customers and whatever. So that's what I was doing. I think back then I wasn't really confident enough to say that, hey, I'm a dating coach, like a full-time dating coach, because I was still learning, right? This, I, I didn't really feel 100% authentic with like just owning that, hey, I I know a lot about dating coach, because like deep down, I think I was still very insecure about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So even though I was helping them out with like a lot of the boot camps and seminars that they were doing in different parts of the world, and I would travel with them and stuff like that, which was an amazing experience. I was more kind of involved um, in the, in the business, yeah, business and marketing uh -huh. side. Okay. yeah but then when did you get your first client then I think this really came this like four or five years ago uh -huh. I was in New York 
like at this point the company kind of disbanded you know mm -hmm. due to some mismanagement of the finances like they yeah. weren't really running the company anymore and then one of them um, he was still kind of like coaching on his own he was about to coach uh, these three guys in New York I happened to be in New York at the same time and he he's English originally and he couldn't come to New York for visa reasons or something and then basically he had, he had asked another mutual friend of ours to kind of like lead these guys mm -hmm. and then I'm also friends with this other guy yeah. so I show up to Washington Square Park yeah. and um, the students were there yeah and then I'm just like talking to the different girls you know yeah. and then the students are like yo what is what is this guy doing you know that's super dope that he can just like show up and like you know talk to girls whatever so pretty much all of them asked me to like coach them like one-on-one -on -one. oh wow yeah so basically I ended up coaching them and then um, I asked I gave my friend like a kind of referral commission essentially because I didn't really like I'm not the one who kind of generated those leads right yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's kind of how I got my first um, oh, nice. client yeah yeah so I think the first clients are the most difficult I think to get to people to realize what kind of value that you can add to their 100%. life yeah, yeah 100% yeah it's funny that we're talking about it because um, yeah yesterday I literally posted a video uh -huh. that talks about how I got my first paying client as a <laughs> coach yeah we'll put a link <laughs> that one was a bit of a different story because the story I just told you is like I never really thought about it as like you know my my actual first paying client because that back then I wasn't like actively building a coaching business. Yeah. It just so that like I was just there yeah, and yeah. it just kind of happened yeah. and they were like hey Steven like can you actually coach me and I was like yeah sure why not. Me intentionally saying that hey like I'm here to actually build a proper coaching practice and business full time for my own thing yeah this is like i've been doing it since january of this year so relatively new yeah oh, that's i think it naturally leads to our next part is what now like so tell me about your coaching business now and also i know you have this house manifest it's super interesting you yeah know? what now yeah as far as coaching business is concerned continuing to serve people um, and continuing to really uh, delve deeper into people's like lives because what I noticed is that there's so many ways you can help people right like optimizing someone's dating profile is one way but for me the way I like to work as of now is really like kind of identify someone who has like a really big potential to like serve others you know in this world everything is like kind of sorted but then in terms of dating relationships they just feel a little bit stuck you know maybe due to some past trauma some like maybe limiting beliefs or some really bad experiences similar to what I experienced back in the day so I want to really help them um, kind of get to the next level in their journey and it ends up being even though the context a lot of the time is just like hey dating relationships how to actually have this like really amazing unforgettable communication how to set the vibe and how to like confidence all that stuff but then it ends up being more like kind of like life coaching because everything yeah. how you do one thing is how you do everything yeah exactly right? yeah. exactly I so everyone has their own breakup my breakup led me to this life coach and dating coach for women mm -hmm. called Matthew Hussey yeah he's yeah. really famous Great he's just too. yeah yeah he, just listening and watching his stuff it feels that he's genuinely care about you yeah that kind of thing and one of his thing is like if you want to be someone that's that's lovable you need to love life first yeah yeah, you need to have a life that you love. It's not about you waiting for someone to save you or exactly. that kind of thing. I totally agree with what you said, like what you do one thing is what you do everything. Yeah. So what is the top three quotes that you think that applies to dating life, but also applies to everyday life? Mm. You're kind of putting me on the spot here. I would say for me, it's more about like codes and principles, yeah, yeah, right? Principles. I think for me, number one is like when clients come to me first, like we got to define what that goal is, right? So if, if they want to create their dream relationship, for example, right? You got to like define what that looks like, what that dream relationship looks like. And a lot of the time when I ask them, it's like, okay, what is your dream relationship? Then they kind of start thinking about, okay, like the woman needs to look this way and then they need to kind of have this color of eyes they need to have this body figure and and etc you know at the end of the day if that's your vibe that could be your vibe as yeah, well yeah. but then for me how i like to actually think that this is different when i ask them how like what kind of relationship do you want to create is that you're creating this relationship with with another person together mm -hmm. so it's all about really finding those like alignment and finding that alignment and values mm -hmm. and your beliefs right so like what kind of togetherness 
do you want to create together, right? Yeah. So it's really, really important for you to clarify that. And fair enough, if you've never done this type of work, like, it's very natural for you to not to know what that looks like, but then motion creates emotion, right? Like once you actually start like and sitting down, like jotting down about like what you really value in life about yourself and maybe about your friends and family, you're gonna start seeing some patterns. Yeah. You're gonna start noticing some patterns as to like what kind of relationship and this, that's to, this togetherness that you like to create. Yeah. So that's the first one. Number two, always spread your vibe. So what does that mean? Um, in this day and age, we're living in this like a hyper uber digitally connected society yeah. so naturally the way you meet people a lot especially like young the younger generation yeah. gen z right yeah. is way more natural to meet people um on the apps right yeah. and the apps can be very fast and efficient but then the 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 side effects the on the other side of the coin is that once you become so used to this type of like online you know meeting people through these apps behavior then it becomes extremely difficult for you to actually start connecting with people offline that's why you know when i actually teach when i coach my clients to like connect with people offline in this day and age in 2024 is such a rare thing because no one does it right yeah really understanding your vibe and then spreading it within that the most important thing is like once you actually start start spreading your vibe and like connecting with people like instead of trying to like take something from them offer value first you know mm -hmm. so like if i let's say if i saw you on the street and yeah. if, if i thought you're cute and i wanted to like yeah, yeah. my natural instinct would be like oh like i want to get a number right <laughs> so like i'm like my first objective is to get a number <laughs> don't think about that like really observe yeah. what i noticed about you first right the way you smile your yeah. outfit maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe your hairstyle like yeah. your your choice of makeup just the way you walk maybe like as i talk to you more i start noticing a couple more things about you yeah. so actually call them out and then just be like Hey, just I just saw you, and I don't know anything about you. Uh -huh. But like, just the way you, the way you're smiling, or the way you like dress, it just like gives me a very um, unique energy about you. Something like that, right? So like, really like yeah, offer yeah. offer value to them, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then from that perspective, it's like yeah no one can say anything bad about you exactly. you know exactly um, i think so those are the three points right first it's like basically know who you are as a person and what kind of like other person completes you mm -hmm. then the second is you be there genuinely be yourself no matter it's online or yes. offline and third i uh, haven't mentioned actually oh, okay. third is qualify for magic so what i mean by that is that when you start becoming this person where like you don't have any baggage or like you're complete with your past incompletions right mm -hmm. you don't have any unresolved like issues yeah. you come from this like a blank canvas right yeah. so that you can design your life in any way you desire then you become a very cool. like a very powerful being that's kind of like a baby you're very curious you're very like playful mm -hmm. you know with the world with the yeah, way you you yeah. know behave right and then once you start spreading the vibe like you're going to be able to attract a lot of people in your life naturally yeah, because yeah. That, that's like your way of being you know yeah, yeah, yeah. so then how do you actually recognize like who to kind of create your tribe with how do you identify who to kind of double down on right yeah. so that's the qualify the qualify for magic kind of comes in right yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, a lot of like my, my clients come it's like they, they ask me hey Steven I met this girl everything is good but like I don't know how to really evaluate you know what is like whether I should see this person again you know I was like okay very simple most importantly after you vibe with this person do you do you feel energized like do you genuinely feel like just like ask yourself an honest question do you does the other person also feel energized and do you know that do you feel like you two can create some magic together and then there's all obviously like a, a, a a whole set of questions that uh, help you evaluate whether that person has like the right vibe with you or not for example like, do you feel like attractive around this person you know do you feel like um, you want to keep spending time with this person you know do you feel like you want to learn more about this person you know there's a few different um, things on the list but then qualifying for magic really helps you not only really choose like what kind of people you want to keep spending your precious time and effort and energy with, mm -hmm. but also like it extends to so many different areas of life. Like when it comes to creating a client, like yeah. this is like something that my mentor told me. Uh -huh. It's like, yeah, Steven, you can help out like 
thousands, hundreds, and millions of people. But like right now, if you want to work one on one with people, yeah. like really protect your vibe and energy, and then like really be honest with yourself, yeah. and think it's like, who do you want to serve actually? Yes, you yes, know, exactly. who do you have this magic with? Yeah. So those are the three things. Well, that's very valuable insights. The first is be yourself. Mm -hmm. Second is spread the vibe and qualify for magic. I like the last one the best. Mm -hmm. I think because we all have very limited amount of time mm -hmm. in the entire lifespan because you have wow. 80 years, let's say. Yeah. 4,000 weeks. Yeah. 80 times 52 yeah. in your life. That's not yeah, that whole lot of time. Because yeah. uh, there's a book of 40,000 weeks and then a lot of other books talks about how precious our time is. Like when I realized that it's just give me more truth to choose what I want to do in life. Yeah. You have 24 hours in a day, no matter how rich you are, how young you are. And it's, it's a matter of like what you create and what you get into today that will give you different energy yeah. and possibilities tomorrow. Yeah. That kind of thing. So it's really good. You asked me about House Manifest, I haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. House Manifest is a, a company I created about two years ago. And it's a residential experience for nomadic creators and nomadic entrepreneurs. And um, basically about five, six years ago, as I was coming out of um, the business school in London, I really set my personal North Star vision as creating this sense of genuine sense of belonging for the people that are on the move a lot and like me and people who are creating their own entrepreneurial vision. When you combine these two sets of people, they feel this loneliness a lot, you know, these pangs of loneliness and isolation because their journey is like just like inherently alone. Not a people are like that, right? Digital nomads. Digital nomads. So essentially kind of solving loneliness for yeah. these people became yeah. my North Star vision. Yeah. And then really kind of helping them connect with themselves on a deeper level so they don't feel that lonely anymore. Helping them find other people as well. And they're try helping them build their tribes very powerfully. Um, that became my vision. And then I kind of went on this journey of building different solutions to kind of solve that problem towards that uh, North Star vision. At first I created like an online app that helps you connect with other digital nomads as their as their friends kind of move from one city to another. Went to Bali for that. COVID happened. Couldn't continue with the business anymore. Pivoted. And then we ended up building this platform, online events uh, platform where during COVID, um, you can jump on and over the course of an hour, you have a series of one-on-one -on -one quick chats with like 10, 15 different people in your online community or remote teams. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. And then basically, while I was building that, I was in Bali living with like four, like four or five people in the same house because it was like the pandemic time. Everything was even cheaper mm -hmm. back then. <laughs> so I was like, OK, like this is kind of like the way to live. And then that experience was just like so amazing. Just being able to to live with like other like minded people mm -hmm. and always being in this environment of like expanding your comfort zone, mm -hmm. having conversations that really kind of like stimulate you. Right. Having having you really identify your blind spots and then doing all that. And then doing that for everyone it's just like such an expansive type of way of living mm -hmm. so i was like yeah i really want to continue to live like this like, a few months later i was in lisbon i found this like 10 bedroom house with an amazing rooftop <laughs> that overlooks the city yeah. i had raised some money from my previous startup and i knew that that startup was gonna kind of wind down because well covid is gonna wrap up soon right something told me that i needed to get this house you know Okay. And I got it and I ended up inviting all these uh, entrepreneurs to kind of come live with me. And that became House Manifest season one. And that was two years ago. And um, yeah, over the course of the past two years, I host this like six or seven seasons so far. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to do one soon? The next one is mostly going to be in Southeast Asia. Uh, uh, probably Bali okay. later this year. So stay tuned. Nice. Yeah. Uh, can you remember like if throughout the whole six season which one of the best days and one of the worst days like the the memory that jump out of your mind now which day would that be I, li I, li I really like your questions <laughs> really good really good um, I think the best day would be that it was like the latest the last season yeah. in the Azores you know off the coast of Portugal we went to this like a natural hot spring like a thermal pool you know and then in that on the island there's a lot of them and we just went there and then I just like look around and everything 
And it's just like, okay, like these are the people that I really care about. A few of them have already been to House Manifest before, so they came back. And yeah, just like that season, like it was completely sponsored as well. Just like realizing that we were like in this like amazing nature and like we didn't have to like really worry about anything. And we were just like really connecting, you know, all of us were just kind of on the same page. So that was like a really cool moment thinking about it. Probably one of my favorite um, days, moments. One of the worst moments, it wasn't really like during during House Manifest, I just like love the vibe. It was um, after the first house. I was in search of uh, the next house because I really liked it. I wanted to continue on yeah. with the idea. After like almost five, four or five months of searching, I identified this house in Lisbon and then I end up advertising and I'm like making a deal and everything. I sell all the seats, you know, the house is booked out, you know. And then at the very end, the deal with the, the owner of the house, it just kind of like, it just kind of like uh, evaporated. You know, so like I promise all these people, Evaporate. yeah, literally evaporated. Disappear. Yeah, disappeared. It was really tough because like out of battery just now. Out of battery. Uh, but now we're back. Now we're back. So, so we're talking about like you have this one of the worst moments because yes. the the house fell through. Yeah. The owner just evaporated out everything of everything. Evaporated. All the deal and everything just evaporated. Mm -hmm. um, basically. Like, so the first house was amazing, yeah. right? It was my first like proof of concept. Yeah. And at the time, like it wasn't, we didn't even call house manifest. It was like Lisbon co-living, you know? That's so, good enough. Yeah, it was good enough, you know, <laughs> MVP, right? Yeah. Had an amazing time and uh, basically came up with like the theme for the whole concept, you know, yeah. because like uh, we manifest together in a house setting, right? Mm -hmm. And it took me almost five, six months, half a year to locate our second house. The second house was amazing. It was like a formerly a four-star hotel, like 16 bedroom, oh. you know, like an insane house in Lisbon, yeah. right? And then basically like, I initially uh, agreed, um, arranged like a deal with someone who was like living there, uh -huh. but then basically like ended up in getting introduced to like the actual owner of the place. Yeah. And there was like multiple stakeholders involved. Mm -hmm. And long story short, Essentially, I structured a um, season two with that house and I already sold all the spots yeah. and that also took me like a few months to make that happen, right? Mm -hmm. And basically, at the very end, the deal kind of evaporated. Not kind of, it, it just evaporated. <laughs> just like, just went, just done, you know? People disappeared. Yeah, just yeah. like, no, no more. Okay. And... So what did you do like after for the following seasons to avoid that happening ever like again? Yes. Um, so to prevent something like that from happening again, uh, first of all, I think just like realizing that a lot of it was kind of outside my control. Mm -hmm. So like not being too critical of like what happened mm -hmm. was like the most important thing because I think like at a certain point I started like being really down about it. Yeah. Okay, like. It was, it, yeah, it's all my fault. And I, I hate to lose people's trust. And I think I might have, but hey, I ended up returning all the money and I, I did whatever I could to really kind of help the situation and everyone be more whole and complete. And then I'm like, okay, what else can I do now moving forward? First of all, like, I don't need to actually stay in Lisbon anymore. No. Right? I yeah. can just do it elsewhere. Like, okay. I, I really wanted to do it in Lisbon because, like, I felt the energy of the city. You were living there. Yeah, like, yeah, it's amazing, it, right? Yeah. Um, but then I was like, hey, objectively speaking, I don't even really like Lisbon. Like, I liked it for the business, you know? Yeah. I, I, I like the... You're not I like tied the, to the city. I'm not tied to the city. I just... Uh, yeah, I was like, hey... Maybe, maybe it's the universe telling me that I need to like explore somewhere else, yeah. you know? Let's actually take a step back and being open to the idea of, yeah, yeah, just like being elsewhere. Good. And that ended up taking me to Thailand and I ended up doing like pretty much like four or five seasons in Thailand. Ooh, and that was amazing. Thailand. Chiang Mai, Pattaya, Koh Samui, Bangkok and Phuket. Nice. Yeah. All of my favorite cities. Yeah. So I think now we can talk about what's next. You've kind of sort of said that the next season will be in Bali and other than the house manifest and now your life coach business, what, is there any other exciting projects that you're working on? Right now, I'm just like 100% uh, heads down building um, the coaching business mm -hmm. and having a lot of active conversations and like just always looking to be in a conversation so that I can kind of go deeper um, and also creating content being consistent on YouTube exactly exactly and <laughs> meeting you actually kind of lit the fire um, as well 
because I'm like, yeah, let's let's let's, let's just keep going with it. Um, so that and yeah, house manifest is something that um, is very opportunistic right now. At, at the moment, we're filming this in London. Um, and when I'm back in Southeast Asia, that's when I'm gonna actually identify oh, another house. Uh, and yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I think we need to ask this question because you've been living this digital nomad life before it's actually a thing. How do you like figure out where to live next? Like, how do you figure out the place? Because this is something that I need to figure out for myself mm. too. How do you figure out this? How do you be comfortable living in this kind of life? Mm. So I think for me, I've, I've been very lucky because in a way, I've I had always been conditioned to kind of live this type of lifestyle because since I was a since I was born really, um, my family and I, we've moved every one to two years across yeah. like different yeah. continents and cultures. Yeah. Just like this idea of like, hey, this is your place and you're gonna be there for like a few years. Like that's is very that is very foreign to me. Uh -huh. You always moved around. Yeah. So like I kind of at a certain point really embraced that okay like i'm always going to be moving around a lot mm -hmm. to answer your question really just like I, th I think i've just been kind of like born into this type of environment really but in terms of like where how i pick the next spots um i mean the older i become the more i realize that i like to be in like a more warmer spots you know <laughs> yes right um i think everyone's the same everyone's right the same. yeah yeah uh, that being said london was like the first place i ever felt really home and i ended up coming here for business school and you know even when I moved out of here after business school like during COVID I came back and I ended up crashing at my friend's couch for it was gonna be for a couple of weeks and it ended up being like 10 months yeah I, I like to come to Europe in the summer um, and then the rest of the time Southeast Asia because you see so much development and so much energy like place like Bali yeah. uh, Bangkok all over Thailand so I like to be a part of that yeah, totally. I think after the pandemic, a lot of people like normally they wouldn't be exposed to this kind of digital nomad life start to realize that it's actually doable yeah. and with the companies more open to that. In the future, if somebody want to try out this kind of like, yeah. where would you say is the best way to try it for someone? Because I always like I told people that I'm going to Lisbon and then their next question is, do you have friends there? I was like, no, I do not. Mm. And then they said, do you know anyone? I said, no. I I don't know mm. and then they, they were like don't you feel like scared i was like, i was scared of what you know mm. <laughs> maybe same as you i've always been moving my entire adult life mm. so it doesn't it doesn't make me feel scared yeah that much but the more i talk to my older friends that they've been living in the same spot yeah. even though it's also a foreign country to their yeah. own culture but then they are not so accustomed to that place that mm. they just cannot get rid of the idea that i need to be attached to someone like how do you like imagine that somebody is your client not necessarily relationship right mm -hmm. but then they wanted to you you can see that they have something that's blocked mm -hmm. how are you going to convince them like at the beginning to oh so you're saying that someone wants to kind of experience get a taste of this digital yeah. nomad yeah. lifestyle i think um like helping them ease into it would be um, really really good yeah. so a, a spot like lisbon bali bangkok like these places where you would be it'd be very easy for you to actually meet other people kind of like kind of dipping their toes into it i think that'd be really really easy because like yeah all these spots there's so much infrastructure already like you just go to a co-working spot and there's like dozens of other people yeah like i remember when i first went out to bali as an adult like in 2019 i just went to a corking space and then they had this like a weekly speed meeting um events oh, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. so like okay i was just there and then i just all of a sudden met like 20 people just like that and then actually this time around i came back to london primarily because one of the one of the friends that i met at that event back in 2019 he was getting married oh cool so like yeah these things could happen it's like rainy now rainy. <laughs> classic london vibe you know wow <laughs> <laughs> if you can fast forward three years a message that you're gonna give to your future self oh wow that's um that's a really good one um first of all document your life more proactively because yeah like if you don't do it it's fine but like i think it, it could also like help people as well um so do that stay present right keep calm and vibe on and then always um 
always have fun. Nice, always have fun. Let's have some fun. There's a lightning round. Yes. Okay. So, number one, what's the most fascinating place you've lived as a digital nomad and why? Oh, ah, man, that's a very interesting one. Okay, the, the, there's one place that comes to my mind. There's a place called Pai in Thailand. Have you heard of this one? No, Pai. Pai, yeah, P-A-I. So it's a few hours north of Chiang Mai, more inland in Thailand. Very small, like a village-like community, very spiritual. A lot of like a kundalini deepening, pathway deepening and chakra alignment and woo woo wah rah rah, <laughs> this type of vibe. Um, there's all these like a fire show events okay. and like, you know, cool. yeah, yeah, and just like driving around. It's like the, the roads are very windy, but then it's so picturesque just like driving around a scooter. Mm. And like, yeah, just like the whole vibe is like, it's almost like you're in a fairy tale. The whole vibe is like really magical. And also San Miguel, Azores, the place that uh, uh, we hosted our most recent House Manifest season at. Mm -hmm. That's just like a straight up fairy tale vibe, like Teletubbies, you know? If you could have dinner with any entrepreneur, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh man. I think the first person that comes to my mind is uh, Phil Knight from Nike. Oh yes, I like yeah. I like that book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Walt Disney as well. Nice. Yeah, he's no longer here, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Good one. Good one. If you had to choose one song as your personal theme song, what would it be? Mm. There's a song called People by this uh, DJ and producer named Claves or Claves. I don't know how to pronounce it, but K L A V E S and um, it's a very funky tune. And at the same time, like, everything that I do revolves around helping people, bringing together people, and it's all about the people at the end of the day. So that's the that's vibe. Right. Yeah. So you have a question from a previous guest. What motivates you every single day when you wake up in the morning? That's a really good one. I don't really think about it actually, <laughs> but I think it's what, a surprise yeah, it is a surprise one. I think what motivates me is like, how can I serve others that I can serve um, and help them get to the next level in their journey. Um, Creates better life for them. Yeah. Nice. You get to leave a question for the next guest. So this is the question that I've been asking people a lot. What's something that you've been really obsessed with nice. in your life yeah, and why? You know, and what have you learned from that? You know? We leave that to the next guest. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. This Thank is you, Lydia. Steve, Steve, uh, Stephen. How do I pronounce your last name? Uh, it's uh, Choi in Korean, but people say Choi. Stephen Choi.